In this video, I'll cover section 11.2, which now deals with two-way tables instead of one-way tables for, like goodness of fit. So we've seen two-way tables before earlier in this course. This is not a new term. And there's going to be two different types of tests that this leads to, a chi-square test of homogeneity and a chi-square test of independence. So this gets into comparing conditional distributions something that we did in order to determine if two categorical variables were independent. We did this with segmented bar graphs and side-by-side -side bar graphs much earlier in the course. And now this is just a way to formalize that process. So I'm not too worried about the conditional distribution. That's all review, so I'm not going to spend too much time there. Maybe I should restart my computer, though. Okay, a detailed follow-up analysis. All right. All right, so chi-square test of homogeneity. The way that we tell if it's a test of homogeneity is that we're looking at one variable across multiple groups. So in this scenario, uh, let me just give you the generic. There's no difference in the distribution of that variable for several populations. And then the, the alternative is there is a difference. So in this scenario, they had the different types of music and the entree that was ordered. So they have, let's see, all right. They want to know, um, give me a second, sorry, as I'm pausing here. I got to go back to the question to see. Does background music influence what customers buy? The null hypothesis is that there's no difference in the distribution of entrees ordered based on the, set, the different types of music. Okay, so the variable is the type of food that they're getting. And the groups are no music, French music, or Italian music. So we have one variable with three separate groups. The one variable is the entree ordered, and these are the three different populations. So this makes this a chi-square test of homogeneity. All right, they talk about how to calculate an expected count. Your calculator is going to do the legwork for this in class, but you have to know how to do it by hand if asked on a multiple choice question or something. You take the row total times the column total divided by the table total. So for example, if I wanted this expected count for Italian and Italian food ordered and French music played, it would be 31 times 75 divided by 243. 31 times 75 divided by 243, which gives you this 9.57. So that's where that's coming from. Conditions for a test of homogeneity are the same as goodness of fit. And they'll be the same on the next test that I'm going to teach you, random 10% large counts, all the same. Now, for the random condition here, it could be from an experiment or independent random samples. So just know that because we're talking about two or more populations or two or more groups here. If it is from an experiment, no need to check that 10% condition. So you're going to have really two tables that you're going to either create or just use some kind of key. The table they give you is going to be the observed counts, and you're going to have to show all of your expected counts on your paper. Typically what I do is I'll do like a slash here next to each of the observed counts and write observed slash expected, and that's my way of communicating which ones are which. Then you'll use those to set up your chi-squared goodness of fit, I'm sorry, your chi-squared test of homogeneity, as far as getting your test statistic, and then use that with chi-squared CDF to get your p-value. So that's what they're doing here. So their p-value is 0 0.011. Similarly, anytime you reject the null or you have significant data, you're going to do that follow-up analysis. And here it's just looking at really some of the biggest discrepancies between the observed and the expected counts. So going back up here, um, I can see pretty quickly that 39 to 31, that's a difference of about 8. 
That seems to be the largest there here. 19 to about 11 and 1 to about 9.5. Those seem to be the largest differences. So really mentioning those in the context of the question, we have convincing evidence of a difference. When no music, French music or Italian is played, furthermore, the random assignment allows us to say that difference is caused by the music played. All right, they didn't really actually do a follow-up analysis there. Kind of surprised. But anytime you reject the null, you're going to need to do that. Um, okay. So on this question, I would do what we always do. Pause the video, work through it to the best of your ability, and then come back and watch me work through this. All right, so we presented data to of Facebook by two randomly selected groups of Penn State students. Here's the data once again. So what they've done is a random sample of the main campus and a random sample of Commonwealth, and then recorded this variable of how often they use Facebook. So we have one variable with, in this case, two populations. This makes this a high-score high test of homogeneity. In essence, we're saying that the distribution of Facebook usage is the same for both groups. And the alternative would be the distribution of Facebook usage is not the same for the groups. Expected counts. So this we're going to actually do on our calculator once we do the test. If I'm doing this by hand for this 55 to find the expected count, I take the row total, I'd sum those up, times the column total. 910 divided by the table total, which looks like it's 1537. And then same thing here, row total times 627 divided by the table total. And that's where you're going to get these expected counts from. And then you're going to use those to calculate your test statistic in part three. So for the main campus, it would be 55 minus the 77.56 squared times the 77.56, and so on and so forth. I'm going to sum all those up to get the test statistic, 19.49. P-value, I'm going to go chi-squared CDF with 19.49 to infinity. Your degrees of freedom for a test of homogeneity are the number of rows minus 1 times columns minus 1, not including the totals. So here we have, not including totals, three rows minus one times two columns minus one. So three minus one times two minus one it ends up being uh, degrees of freedom of two. So I'd use that as the last part. So your p-value is extremely small, probably to scientific notation. Interpret the p-value. That's a skill that you should know how to do. We've been doing on and off for a bunch of units. That's if the null is true, the likelihood that you get this result or something more extreme by chance. So if there is no difference in the distribution of Facebook use among students at the main campus and Commonwealth campus, then there is a 0 0.000059 probability of getting a test statistic of this 19.49 or larger by chance. What conclusion would we draw? We would absolutely reject the null. We have a lot of evidence that it's different. And then I could do a follow-up analysis talking about how it's different. Okay, so that's going through a chi-squared test of homogeneity. This covers how to do it in the calculator, which we will cover in class. You have to use a matrix, and that's where it's going to populate the expected counts for us. All right, let me move on. Okay, so this just kind of summarizes what we went through on the previous page. Gives you an example goes through your state plan to and conclude. Sometimes you might get a computer output with some of the stuff done for you and you have to be able to read and interpret this. So in this case, it says the expected counts are printed below the observed counts. So let me make this a little bit larger. So these are your observed counts. These are your expected. And then it says the chi-squared contributions are printed below the expected. So in this scenario, you have a test statistic of 18.279, a degrees of freedom of four, and a p-value of pretty small, excuse me, 0 0.001. So of this sum of 18.279, I can see most of this came from group two French and group two Italian. 
about 14 of the 18.2 is there. So if I'm doing a follow-up analysis, I can mention the fact that these are the largest contrib contributions or contributors and talk about if they're more or less than expected. All right, I think that's going to take us kind of pretty much through the end. So this just goes through the state plan do conclude. Um, you don't actually have to, in the state plan do conclude, look at the conditional distributions and make a comparison. That's just part of the kind of non-formalized testing that we did earlier in the year. So if you want to run through this on your calculator, I'd encourage you to do that, and then you can show you could check in and, and see how things went. So I'm gonna be brief here. You could read what this says, but you're gonna end up with a test statistic of 11.725, degrees of freedom are four, and your p-value is 0 0.02 approximately. So you're, yeah, I hope you noticed this. This was really tricky. They switched the significance level to 1%, so we're actually gonna to fail to reject the null, saying that we don't have convincing evidence in the distribution of quality of life for heart attack patients in Canada and the US. All right, let's move along. Okay, I'm gonna stop the video here and make a new video for the second part of this section.